we started with the purchase of traditional name brand ultrasound machines and we could access the video data from that machine but we couldn't access the internal data and our first big break was when we got a CFI grant and this grant funded our first purchase of the ultrasonics machine. This machine was supported with a, a network, high-speed network and a number of um, high-speed computer workstations and we used that to build the infrastructure to get started on much larger ultrasound related projects. We saw eye to eye on a number of, of projects that were worth pursuing and uh, the support uh, in terms of uh, letters and commitment to help us technically was very useful for us to obtain funding. I'm an associate professor in the departments of electrical and computer engineering and mechanical engineering. I have a joint appointment because my real field of expertise is biomedical engineering and this is multidisciplinary so I actually work with a number of people in different engineering departments. And I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of British Columbia and I uh, have been doing research in medical robotics, medical imaging and uh, elastography for a number of years. A lot of people came to the lab because of our prior robotics and haptics work uh, which had some uh, uh, award-winning demos that people really uh, enjoyed, like uh, needle insertion uh, simulation and uh, uh, being able to maneuver uh, virtual objects. And I think it was a natural transition for us uh, to actually uh, blend this with actual imaging. So it's very exciting that you can take the, the raw data from the ultrasonics machine and actually um, uh, process it the same way a manufacturer would do and, and in improved ways in many ways. So it was a huge recruiting tool for us. The open architecture not only allows us to do research by grabbing the data we need in order to perform our image processing algorithms, it allows us to actually develop our techniques and show them directly on the ultrasound machine. So this is a big benefit for two reasons. It helps us go into clinical trials at hospitals because we don't need to bring an ultrasound machine and a whole separate computer workstation and other image processing hardware. We develop everything and integrate it right on that clinically approved machine. When you're trying to commercialize and you want to convince an industry partner, including ultrasonics, that these tools are valuable, it helps to have a very polished looking end uh, result. So we can go fairly quickly from uh, concept through prototype to a fairly sophisticated, polished looking uh, system in a relatively short period of time. My name is Orchun Göksel and I'm doing uh, my PhD studies in UBC. My thesis was on uh, meshing and rendering of uh, for patient specific models. One of my particular projects was on ultrasound simulation and later how to use this ultrasound simulation during needle insertion for prostate brachytherapy procedures. I grabbed a whole bunch of uh, images from a phantom and then what I tried to do is try to simulate similar images of any given orientation. And I coupled it with a needle insertion simulation. This, this image is again here the same way they are simulated from a known, this white box here is actually a known ultrasound model that is captured from a patient. I can actually insert the needle here, as you see, into the model and at the same time see the simulated ultrasound images on this side. Do you see the 3D anatomy? from different angles if you like, and then how you see how the ultrasound images represent that anatomy. The green uh, part is the pubic, pubic arch, the pubic bone, and red is the prostate, and behind you see the bladder. Uh, medical trainees can use it to uh, improve their skills. Of course, the cool part is I can actually use the uh, haptic device here to control the needle. As I insert here, you can see the needle tip, and you can see the prostate over there moving, and I can feel the forces of the insertion and penetration into the prostate capsule. And if I want to insert, I want to simulate an insertion to another spot, I can actually click somewhere else and as you see the needle follows where I click and I can just insert it into another grid point. Uh, to validate this procedure and then to see actually if you're capturing the phantom displacements and also the patient immovable displacements correctly and then simulating the ultrasound images, yes I use the ultrasonic system. There's an interface to capture the images. So this is a fibroelastography module. Imagine this is the patient, and then yeah. the, the blue thing is the, the prostate. So the transrectal ultrasound probe goes into the patient's rectum, right? And then this motor uh, gives the vibration to the probe so that it vibrates the, the tissues and organs. And then, um, then we record the data into the ultrasound machine. And uh, 
fit it into the elastography program that Raisa is uh, developing, right? Uh, the unique thing about this is that you can control it with any computer. Along with the vibration machine, we have another motor hooked up to the stepper. This motor actually allows the probe to rotate from minus 50 degrees to 50 degrees. This enables us uh, to collect fibroelastographic data in a volume. My name is uh, Thomas Diego Pananta, uh, and I'm a master's student from uh, working with Dr. Rowling and Dr. Salkudian Boon. Uh, my project is actually on the robotic needle guide for the prostate. Right? But uh, during my master's years, I was also uh, helping Tim with the fluid lithography device, so that's why I'm here explaining the, how it works and everything. I think the future for, uh, for ultrasound machines is primarily in being able to customize it to, uh, to specific applications. And, uh, uh, both for different specialties and uh, maybe for broader use uh, in general practitioners' uh, uh, offices. And uh, I think that uh, ultrasonics has a very good position actually to, um, uh, to be part of uh, this change because of their open architecture that will allow lots of uh, researchers and clinicians to develop applications for them. And, um, um, and uh, move them with relative ease to the clinic. Well, we have grand visions, we have grand plans. We're tackling ever bigger and bigger goals because we realize that there's a lot of opportunity still there in developing the system and developing the algorithms to improve the quality of ultrasound and improve the ways ultrasound can use to guide therapy and treatment. So uh, we really hope to actually grow this tremendously with ultrasonics over the next few years. So. Uh, as an example, we hired nine new graduate students uh, this past September. Uh, all of them are on projects related to ultrasound-guided diagnosis and therapy. We are going to continue growing our group and growing our collaboration with Ultrasonics, and we think we have uh, uh, big potential ahead of us.